Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time on this Tuesday night. It is lovely to have you guys in for another episode of the Prime Time Show. Thank you, as always, for spending your valuable time here with Robert and myself. We got wide receiver options to talk about. So often at this time of year, it feels like we get so narrow with the discussions, which is ironic. Because we never have more football players to talk about than right now. And instead, once you know which selections in the upcoming draft your team has, we seem to recycle the same names over and over and over again for months and months and months. So much so that you get tired about talking about the same names, even if they make the most sense for your football team, and then start to talk about other names because we have so much time to kill. And with three weeks left, Still to go before the NFL draft. Completely understandable why that would be the case. So we're going to branch out a little bit. We're going to talk about more than Malik Neighbors at the top of the draft. More than just the LSU wide receiver or one of two LSU wide receivers that is in this upcoming draft class. And why the Titans should not limit their options to just Malik Neighbors if a wide receiver is the player, uh, or if a wide receiver is the player that they are going to consider or the position group that they are going to consider, their options are plentiful. And so we'll work through some first-round wide receivers. We'll talk about day two and day three prospects as well. Joshua Medina says it best. Malik Neighbors and Joe Alt, those are the two names that Titans fans have been recycling over and over and over again. Uh, And I want to break the cycle a little bit just for my own sanity so we can talk about some other prospects and not just the two same names that you guys have been dialed in on, it seems, for basically the entirety of the pre-draft lead-up. B. French wants to know on YouTube why Bert is ignoring his questions since you guys have time together. Bert is playing video games and not paying attention to anything that's going on here. I'm back here working. What are you talking about? Get off the screen with your shirtless ginger ass. I don't want to see you while you play video games and while you're off on some kind of raid party in World of War. Warcraft. Exhausting. Either way, we are going to get into some player evaluation tonight. But first and foremost, what we need is for you guys to share this show on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. No matter where it is that you are spending time with us, the best way to ensure that Bert and his shirtless self does not appear on your screen again is to share this show. If you're hanging out on Twitter, please retweet it in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you're on Facebook Live, you can share. You can share now to public. That's in the bottom left. And if you're on YouTube or on Twitch, please subscribe to the channel where D. Good says, how dare you disrespect Bert. Bert exists to be disrespected. Bert exists to disrespect things that deserve respect which in turn does not garner my respect. But we don't need to spend more time on that. We got wide receiver prospects to talk about, so let's dive in. Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time from the Zen Sports Studios. I'm your host, Buck Rising. If you're new to the program, welcome. We're happy to have you. And I am proud, as always, to be presented to you by the wonderful people at True Map Fitness in the Gulch. If you want to make sure that you look good with Summer, right around the corner, True Math Fitness is there, not just to work on your physical appearance, but to help you with your physical fitness as well. I was talking about how much weight True Math Fitness helped me lose earlier today with Brett Kern, as a matter of fact. Brett Kern, who is going to be on the radio show tomorrow as our master's analyst. Can't wait to catch up with him. But the place to get in the best physical fitness, physical condition for you is TrueMathFitness.com. The Ashton Real Estate Group of Remax Advantage, the official real estate agent of the Nashville Predators, who are currently getting worked right now at Bridgestone Arena. They just need a point to clinch a playoff spot, and the Jets have them down 3-1 in the early going. Uh, We are also made possible by Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code A2YOZTN. You can bet on the Stanley Cup playoffs, which are right around the corner. You can bet on the NBA play-in, which is also right around the corner. So many of your favorite major sports there for you to wager on in the Zen Sports app, and Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealership, Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet, or online at tworiversford.com. Let's talk receivers. As I mentioned, we tend to recycle the same names over and over and over again in the pre-draft process 
because there's just a lot of time and the most famous names at the top of the draft. The first round prospects are the prospects that the vast majority of people are going to know. These are the players that played at top flight programs. These are the uh, Alabamas, the Ohio States, the Georgias, the Michigans, right? Now, there will be players from every Power Five conference, every uh, every level of college football throughout the course of the draft, and there's plenty of players who were high-caliber college football players that will go on day two and day three. But we do tend to get caught up in the first round anytime we talk about the draft, which is stupid because the vast majority of your roster is built out on days two and three. The first round pick just has typically the most star power associated with their names. So when we go through these wide receiver options, if we're going to talk wide receiver at the top of the draft for the Titans at seven overall, which is where they're currently slated to pick, we'll see if that doesn't change over the course of the next less than three weeks. Let's talk about some other options besides just Malik Neighbors. Now, we ultimately may decide here tonight that Malik Neighbors is still the best option at the top of the wide receiver draft for the Tennessee Titans, should they choose to explore the wide receiver path. It's possible. Um, But I think that there's so many talented wide receivers, so many different shapes, sizes, speeds, um, skill sets to dive into, all in the first round, many in the first round. Of course, there's players to be uh, had at the position in, in rounds two and three and four and five all down through this draft process. It is one of the most talented wide receiver drafts, if not the most talented wide receiver draft that we have seen in the modern NFL era. I think we ought to shake it up a little bit and look at a couple of different players. So um, if you are going to sit at seven and if you are going to stick and pick with the seventh overall selection, and if for some reason, whatever that reason might be, I my preference is still for them to take the best offensive tackle with whichever draft choice in the first round that they end up choosing. But as we look at this situation right now, what is the best prospect? Which wide receiver prospect at the top of the draft do you favor the most? Who's your favorite first round wide receiver prospect? We'll talk about it together on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and on Twitch. We'll discuss at length. It's your Two Rivers Ford take. As always, it's made possible by the wonderful people at Two Rivers Ford. Quality American-made Ford vehicles, award-winning customer service. They even offer mobile service at the South's most trusted Ford dealership. That's Two Rivers Ford. They've been in business here in Middle Tennessee for over 40 years, and they sell all their non-specialty new Ford vehicles below MSRP. Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com where you can order your next vehicle just the way that I did. I bought my uh, Ford online at tworiversford.com and they delivered it to my door. It was just like uh, just like an Amazon package. It's great. Two Rivers always makes it easy for you to succeed. Who's your favorite day one wide receiver prospect? Let's talk about it. Um, Bryce Erickson says Keon Coleman. So that's not I, I that's not one of the first names that I saw in here, but it is one of the more surprising names. And Keon Coleman, I'm glad you brought him up, Bryce. He is one of the more polarizing players in this draft class and specifically with this position. You are correct. He does have a catch radius that is basically a two-car garage. Um he will eventually be a starting wide receiver. I have seen a lot of comps to Drake London specifically, of course, who was a former first round pick himself by the Atlanta Falcons. And as you look at the strengths, he's definitely got the prototypical size, definitely got the high end ball skills that you like. Uh, Very difficult to bring down. He has that size that is going to make him um, a quality wide receiver at the next level. He uh, he measured, he measured and weighed in at 6'3", 213 at the Combine. Uh, Of course, Keon Coleman, the wide receiver out of Florida State, if you're not familiar. Arms, 32 and 1 8 inch. Uh, Hand size, 9 and 3 8 inches. He had a 4'6", 140. Wasn't certainly not the fastest. His uh, gauntlet drill, though, was the most impressive. He completed the gauntlet drill at the Combine, which is where uh, the wide receiver runs the width of the field across the 50-yard line while uh, people are throwing a football for him to catch 
uh, at him from both sides of the field, has to have the ability to catch and run, has to have the awareness, has to have the ball skills, uh, and a far more practical application of a wide receiver skill set than just having them run a straight line very, very fast or as fast as humanly possible. Keon Coleman does have some polarizing traits to him, though. He doesn't seem to do well with press, uh, which at his size should not be as big of a factor as it is. He seems, we talked to Legereus Sneed, right? Legereus Sneed talked about how important it is to get physical with the wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. In fact, I think I might have that uh, that clip handy. I'm pretty sure I have that clip handy. No, that's Legereus Sneed talking about uh, meeting with his preacher before signing with the Titans. But in that Legereus Sneed interview that I did with him at the practice facility last week, he talks at length about the value of being a press corner, about getting tough with them at the line of scrimmage, about disrupting the quarterback's rhythm right out of the gate. It is the fastest way to disrupt the quarterback's rhythm, even faster than interior pressure, or a guy screaming off the edge at him. Keon Coleman is somebody, if the Titans were to trade back, he would make a lot of sense. I do believe that he is going to be a first round pick and and most places that I see him projected have him as a first round pick, though he is one who I think is on the borderline of a late first, early second in a stacked wide receiver class, though he is a really fun player and would make a lot of sense in a system, well, Actually, I don't know necessarily that he makes a lot of sense in a system like this one because I don't necessarily know specifically what this system is going to look like. I think I have an idea. I've watched enough Cincinnati Bengals to know what they ran in Cincinnati with that specific set of personnel, but this is a different set of personnel, and it's an, a continuously evolving set of players that they're going to add to this team. So I don't know what their preference is going to be. But Keon Coleman makes sense in a lot of different NFL offenses. Josh Medina says, Roma Dunze. I see Xavier Worthy at 38. Burner, I don't think he's going to be there in the second round. Anybody who breaks the 40-time uh, record has always gone in the first round. That kind of speed is tough to come by, especially uh, when he's just set the record. What did Xavier Worthy run? It was like a 4-2, right? Just uh a little, it might have been less than a 4 2 if I remember correctly, his unofficial time. Um, neighbors says Major Keys. That's his favorite. Odunze for Rishi. M H J. Marvin Harrison Jr. says Joshua Medina. I have not seen a ton of love for Marvin Harrison Jr. Corey D. Jackson uh, says the Ohio State wide receiver, as does B. French. A handful of you guys, but not as many as I would think, given that that has been the most talented or the most pro-ready wide receiver prospect of any of these guys all year long. That hasn't changed. The tape remains the tape. And to see the way that this discussion has changed over the course of, or at least fluctuated over the course of the last month and change since the combine has concluded, has been pretty interesting to me. Uh, Sam Barton says, Leggett in second round. We're not talking second round. I asked you guys for your favorite day one prospects at wide receiver. We'll talk about day two and day three here in just a second. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna let you uh, hear from Matt Harmon of Reception Perception on my favorite wide receiver prospect in this draft class here in just a second, right after I remind you that the primetime program is presented by True Math Fitness in the Gulch, a new way to work out for the best version of you. That's what True Math Fitness offers. If your spring break bod is lagging a little bit, because you've let your foot off the gas, that's okay. With beach season right around the corner, True Math Fitness is there to help you. I'm going to Miami this weekend, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to feel confident about getting in a swimsuit on South Beach because of True Math Fitness, whether it is improving your physical look, whether it is your strength and conditioning, whether it is about your physical fitness, all things are possible at TrueMathFitness.com where your physical fitness is concerned. A new way to work out for the best version of you. Go and get your first workout free at TrueMathFitness.com today and tell them A to Z Sports sent you. Let Worth Campbell know that you're an A to Z Sports watcher and listener and a Titans fan. He is a diehard Titans fan. His family has had a suite at Nissan Stadium since it was the Coliseum. Um, Worth, I'm pretty sure Worth goes to every home Titans game, and I think he does a couple road trips 
a year as well. So you can talk some shop and get the best workout in Middle Tennessee at TrueMathFitness.com. So my favorite prospect at the wide receiver spot, it's not Marvin Harrison Jr. And it's not Malik Neighbors. I'm a big fan of Romo Dunze, and I loved the breakdown that I saw on Matt Harmon's uh, discussion with the Fantasy Footballers podcast a couple of weeks ago. Especially just sticking on Rome here, like he's a guy that will, again, line up as an X receiver. I think he can line up in other spaces too, but primarily he's going to be that outside boundary receiver. And you see him do everything at an extremely high level. He beats press coverage at an extremely high level. He's a great route runner, really strong technician. He has excellent hands. I think he has the best hands in the class. I think he's underrated as a tackle breaker. He's not going to make those mind-bending, angle, ankle-breaking, um, angle-destroying plays like Malik Neighbors is going to make. But he can make that first tackler miss and pick up a few extra yards there. Like To me, that's a really safe prospect profile, too. Like I, I, It's hard for me to look at him on on film and think like how is this not going to translate to the NFL level how in some degree like how he could obviously have room to grow and all of that stuff but I just see him being a successful NFL player so that's Matt Harmon uh who does a great job at reception perception it's his sub stack uh, and forgive me that's the dynasty nerds podcast not the fantasy footballers podcast my mistake but still it's fantasy football content, but the analysis of the wide receiver is spot on. And I'm not saying that Romo Dunze is my favorite prospect because he is one of the, if not the safest prospect in the draft class of the uh, of the wide receivers out there, but because his route craft is exceptional, because he's got that prototypical size, um, because he has all of the traits that you would want out of the top draft prospects, and has a degree of reliability that I don't, it's not that Malik Neighbors is an unreliable player, and certainly Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably the safest uh, player at the position, but what I see in Romo Dunze is something that I have not seen from the Titans wide receiver core, save DeAndre Hopkins last year, which is a reliable playmaking target that can move the chains on third down that uh, carries himself with the frame and play strength of an NFL wide receiver one. He's not a burner, but he has the separation talent to succeed. Uh, certainly could stand to be better as a run blocker. Um, there is some, some of the contested catch stuff uh, that I would like to see him improve upon because we know how important that is at the NFL level. But those are the same kind of things. There are some of those things that are also concerns for Malik Neighbors. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best all-around, most pro-ready prospect in the draft class for certain. But Odunze is somebody who I really, really like. Not necessarily just for the Titans, even though obviously we're talking Titans. I cover the Tennessee Titans. But just generally, he has been one of my favorite players to watch in this draft class, regardless of position. So... I think he's going to end up being a top 10 pick, Odunze. I think that all three of these guys, neighbors, Harrison Jr. and Odunze, are capable of being a top 10 pick. But for, you know, if I if if I wasn't specific to a team, just generally, and you asked me who my favorite wide receiver prospect is in this draft class, I really, really enjoy watching Romo Odunze. He's just been fun to break down, uh, to watch more of, to take some questions to Greg Cosell and ask about, to talk to coaches about. And scouts, he is somebody um, who is going to succeed at the NFL level. All three of these guys should succeed, barring injury, at the NFL level. But in particular, I like Odunze. So let's talk about day two and day three prospects. Now that we've talked a lot about first-round prospects, who is your favorite day two or day three wide receiver? Let's talk about it together. Let's get into some of the analysis. You'll hear more from Matt Harmon, as a matter of fact, here in just a second. Um, actually, before we move on though, I want to, I want you guys to hear his analysis of the top wide uh, of the top three wide receivers in general, just to kind of understand from a more analytical perspective, how people who watch the tape, who grind the tape are viewing these guys right now. So I'd love to hear how you view those three wide receivers and in, in the order that you would rank them currently today in the beginning of April. Yeah. So my mission statement with the top three players in this class, which I'm with you, that that's the clear top three has been, they're all top 10 
graded prospects for me. Personally, as players, I have it as Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, and Malik Neighbors. Again, all yes. in the first tier. And I'll tell you what, guys, like I struggled more with like whose film do I like better, Marvin Harrison's or Roma Dunze? Because Rome is just that clean to me as a prospect. Now, I ended up giving the edge to Marvin Harrison because – He's in terms of reception perception doubled cover double covered at the highest rate I've ever charted for a prospect. Like everybody knows he's the dude, and they still can't stop him. His success rate against double coverage is higher than anybody that's seen double coverage at at like even half the rate that he's at. They're really good wide receivers in this class. Again, it may be the most talented wide receiver draft class uh, that we have seen. Um, Let's see. Eric asked, what happened to Keon Coleman? Nothing happened to Keon. As far as I know, nothing happened to Keon Coleman, unless there was some news that I missed. I, I think he's completely fine. I'm not sure what that question is in reference to. Um, Malik Washington, wide receiver from Virginia. Okay, you guys are, are giving me day two and day three wide receiver prospects. Let's break it down here on the Primetime Show. Right after I remind you that the Primetime Show is presented by the Ashton Real Estate Group of Remax Advantage. The official real estate agent of the Nashville Predators reminds you, don't sell without the intel. The Ashton Real Estate Intel is the best in the business. It's why they have helped so many Middle Tennesseans find their dream address without the stress. Go to GaryAshton.com. Don't buy or sell your next home without the Ashton Real Estate Group of REMAX Advantage and the Intel Edge you need to succeed. Okay. Day two, day three prospects. There's a great many of them at the wide receiver position to like a lot. Once you get past, and I really do think, I mean, you know, kind of just glancing through the wide receivers, I think it's possible that Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU could go in the first round. Uh, Adonai Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell rather, could go in the first round. Lad McConkey could be a borderline first round player. So it does make some of this uh, a little a little tougher to kind of evaluate because there are a fair amount of guys who I think are on the border of this. But as you talk about day two, day three wide receiver prospects, who are you interested in? Names like Ricky Pearsall, Jermaine Burton at Alabama, Roman Wilson, the Michigan wide receiver. Who is your favorite among these guys? Eric likes Troy Franklin from Oregon. Chris Frazier says Lad McConkey. Who... As a prospect, doesn't mean that he'll be this as a pro, but Greg Cosell has said as a prospect watching him at Georgia, he reminds Greg of watching uh, Cooper Cup at Eastern Washington. Now, Cooper Cup landed in the perfect place to be able to maximize himself and go on to be uh, an offensive player of the year, uh, a borderline MVP candidate at the wide receiver position, which is really, really hard to do. There is no guarantee that Lad McConkey becomes Cooper Cup just because Greg says watching him in college, it reminded me of Cooper Cup. But there are some similarities, which is certainly a plus. Um, it just depends on what kind of system you're running. Now, I don't know if the Titans are going to run a Sean McVay-like system, but I do know that the Shanahan tree, the pass happy, well, this is not, it's not even Shanahan because Shanahan is a run-based offense and this features or figures to be more focused on the passing game. But I do like a lot of what Lad McConkey brings, provided that he goes to the right place, which you could which you could say of basically anybody. Um, Corey D. Jackson says, Lad is a beast, go dogs. Uh, Derek says, it's because he's white, isn't it? No, it's because they're physically built the same. Um, because they, they are striders. They are gliders with their gait they're not burners they're not tiny little uh they're not tiny little white slot receivers these are these are legitimate ex players um if you were to line them up on the outside at the line of scrimmage and ask them to go win they're capable of doing that um lad will be a chief says steven rodriguez god help you you better hope not so looking at day 2 day 3 prospects it's hard for me to move off troy franklin um i know he's further at the top of the list i really enjoyed uh, Steve Smith's breakdown of him, as a matter of fact. Steve Smith, who is uh, at the NFL Network now after playing for the Carolina Panthers and the Baltimore Ravens, he is a really interesting player. And uh, I've always enjoyed Steve Smith's analysis. That's why when he punked uh, Jerry Judy last year with the Denver Broncos, I took it seriously because Steve Smith knows that position better than any other and certainly uh, can talk the talk when it comes to how that position is to be played like about Troy Franklin 
um, from the University of Oregon, number 11. Uh, he has it tattooed on his fast life. He does have the fast life. A pure speed guy. His superpower is speed. And his weakness is speed. They can be both. Catches on the go. This is a track meet. You're not going to win. He has that California rolling stop, right? So I'm not stopping completely. Okay, no car. I'm good. Comes out of the break. When he's catching a football, he's going back towards the line of scrimmage. Watch his yards after catch. This is the level of speed. Why you would draft him. Great adjustment. Puts two feet down. Goes in. I call speed the accessory. What Troy Franklin needs to work on is his accessory can't be the main thing. So that's Steve Smith's breakdown of Troy Franklin. Not a complete prospect, but certainly adds team speed, which the Titans could use. Again, I totally expect them to add a wide receiver in this draft process, as should you. Uh, they need it. It's not just 29-year-old Calvin Ridley and 31 going on. Is Hop going to be 32? Uh, this season, I think he will be 31 as the season starts. I'm going to look up DeAndre Hopkins' age really quickly. I don't think. Uh, yeah, he's 31 right now, so he will be uh, 32 in June, as a matter of fact. Okay, so we will see what happens with DeAndre Hopkins as he continues to age. But you have to have some kind of youth influx, some kind of talent influx, Beyond Ridley and Hopkins, who are, you know, and I appreciate that Calvin Ridley says he's got the body of a 25-year-old because he doesn't have as much uh, tread on the tires. He is, uh, you know, he is going to be subjected to, to certain things that just happen as your body starts to age because it's not just about tread and physical wear and tear on the exterior, but it's about how your soft tissue reacts to the wear and tear, the grind, the physical stopping and starting um, the conditioning, all these different things. And it's just harder at 29 than it is at 25. So we'll see what Calvin Ridley has in the tank. If last year was any indication and not his best year, I think you should feel pretty confident in that. I don't like uh, the idea of relying on Traylon Burks for anything. There's no reason to, uh, if you can avoid, uh, or there's no reason to think that he can be trusted in this particular setting. I hate that that's where we are with Traylon Burks, but that's just kind of the way that I'm approaching him this season, approaching his football application this season. I just think that if you can make him an afterthought, that would be ideal. Uh, Derek says, no, Buck, if you ask people, uh, will you say, if you ask people, will you say, will say, oh, if you ask, people will say, that's just poor comma placement, Derek. If you ask, people will say you have to go on a whole line with every pick until the end of time. Well, Derek, it's yes, you're right. But also you can't you can't blame those people um, because your offensive line has been dog shit for two years, probably since Lawan busted his ACL in 2020, uh, the first time around. It's really not been right since that moment. And they were cooking uh, at the start of the 2020 season. It has been a brutal circumstance since then and not something that you can fault Titans fans for having PTSD about. So uh, while I don't think it's the most practical use of your seven draft picks to go offensive line every pick, I can hardly blame Titans fans who feel that way because it has been awful. Uh, he says national media still has hope for Burks, LOL. Well, you can still have hope. It's not. There's nothing wrong with having hope for the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have hope for the guy personally. Not, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Titans fan. I don't root for the Titans to win or to lose. I'm just along for the ride, basically. And, uh, you know, that's the team that I cover. But on a from a human standpoint, it he's gone through hell. I hate it for him. I hate it for Caleb Farley. I hate it for guys who whose bodies have physically let them down, who have all the potential, all the talent in the world, and just can't stay on the field long enough to make it happen. So there's nothing wrong with having hope for Traylon Burks. Like I said, I personally have hope for Traylon Burks, I hope that he goes on to have the best possible professional uh, career that he can. But it's just at this point, what can you trust? What on this football team do you trust? Can you rely upon? Is there a body of work for you to be able to rely upon them? And Traylon Burks just doesn't have that. Uh, coming into year three, Kyle Phillips doesn't have that. I, 
I struggle to to put Chig to not put Chig in that same category, though Chig does have a better body of work than the other two. He still does leave a bit to be desired, and we'll see if he can't improve. We'll see if all th- this may be a breakout year for all three of them, right? It you could have these guys just completely counted out, and all of a sudden they turn into legitimate contributors and role players for you in some form or fashion. It's possible, but you, you can't count on them. You, you, you can't count on them to date until such time as you can. I don't think that you can legitimately have them uh, as a part of that conversation. But Troy Franklin is my favorite uh, day two or day three wide receiver. Definitely a day two wide receiver. Uh, Steve Smith also gave some love to Jalen Coker, who I think is worth talking about. Uh, somebody to keep an eye on in the day three range. Of Jalen Coker, Holy Cross, 6'1", 218 pounds. The way he runs routes, really, really good. Because he lines up all over the place. You ready, my comp? Tim Duncan. Box out. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Catch. Uh. Dunk. Uh. No wasted movement. Look at this. Quarterback hung him out to dry. He knows, but he still goes up with authority. Look at the route, though. Corner knows he's in trouble. Look at the corner. Hey, I'm open. There's a few routes, and this is one of the routes where I'm like, he can play. Gives him a step. Yes. Yes. You don't see routes like that. Watch how he catches the ball with his hands. Outside releases, crosses him over. Look at the hands catch. 2023. My man only had two drops. He's probably a late round guy. The kid from Holy Cross is a hell of a route runner. So that's Steve Smith breaking down Jalen Coker from Holy Cross. A lot of wide receivers. A lot of great breakdowns from Steve Smith. I really enjoy him. Between him, uh, I love the work that Matt Harmon does with wide receivers. And honestly, Brandon Thorne with the offensive line uh, stuff has been excellent. Really helps people like me who don't have scouting backgrounds, obviously didn't play the game at the professional level helps us to understand more about what it is that we're watching in a, in a way that's easily digestible. And I appreciate that. We'll wrap things up with a gone viral video here on the primetime program, right after I remind you that the uh, primetime show is made possible, if not outright presented by Zen sports, $1,000 on your no danger, first wager and same game parlays for you to get boosted odds on the NBA, the NHL, and all your favorite major sports. All you have to do is download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, and get in on all the action. Terms and conditions do apply. Must be 21 plus and in the state of Tennessee to bet. If you have a gambling problem, call the Tennessee Red Line, 1-800-889-9789, and they will take care of you. So the gone viral video, what's the best thing you saw on the internet this week? The best thing that I saw on the internet this week was something that landed in my inbox earlier today from the Tennessee Titans, a really cool story uh, that they have been pushing um, for quite some time and finally were able to help get across uh, the finish line, for lack of a better term. They announced the approval today for girls flag football to be an official TSSAA state-sanctioned high school sport. Tennessee is only the 10th state to sanction girls' flag as a high school sport, and it's a really, really cool thing to get the game to the most possible people, especially with so many different high-level athletes who want to play football in some form or fashion, and maybe we're not there with contact, uh, with, uh, with just outright fully padded football for female athletes just yet, though there have been some opportunities, either special teams, Uh, We've seen linebackers in years past at the high school level. This is something that is trending in the right direction and is a huge step for women's sports to be able to continue to grow, to be able to continue to flourish, and to create more opportunities at the high school level, potentially at the college level, for athletes to just get in the game. And for the Titans to be as big a part of it as they have uh, is really, really cool to see. Blaze the trail, 
And I expect that there will be a time three, four, five years from now where this is a sanctioned sport across the state and it's you who are the first to do it and to blaze that trail for everyone. So congratulations. The Titans have an obligation to grow and develop the game of football. Uh, this is one piece of that. Don't be scared to try something new because it's, this is brand new and everybody is loving it and we're making history. There he is. As much excitement about girls like football as I've seen with any sport. Very cool. Congratulations to uh, the TSSAA. Congratulations to the Titans. Congratulations to uh, women's flag football players everywhere. Really, really cool to see. So, that is going to do it for us this evening. Listen, the radio show is going to be electric tomorrow, and not just because we are at Hattie B's. We are going to have our master's analyst. You know him well. This will be the fourth annual visit from Titans legend Brett Kern. He's going to come out to Hattie B's at the factory in Franklin with us. If you're driving around Middle Tennessee and you want to stop in for lunch, meet Brett, hang out, talk some shop. We'll obviously talk some Titans as well, but Brett is a huge golfer. Uh, he's also helping me out with some Leukemia and Lymphoma Society stuff as well. A really, really cool opportunity that I'm going to have for you guys to uh, bid on the opportunity to play in a foursome at Hermitage here in Nashville, uh, a golf foursome with Brett Kern and Ben Jones. And I'll tell you how you can bid on that opportunity tomorrow when Brett is on the radio show in the 11 o'clock hour. You can uh, come hang out with us again at the factory in Franklin, their Hattie B's spot at the factory in Franklin. We're also going to have a big show announcement having to do with Hattie B's, which we're thrilled about. And uh, so it will be great if you uh, guys are driving around town, listen to the radio show tomorrow, stop by Hattie B's in Franklin, and we will see you there from 10 to 1. Have a great rest of your evening. Uh, Stokely says, but well, Bert just put this on the screen himself. Says, Buck, say something nice about Bert before you sign off. He didn't smell bad today. I wasn't, I wasn't even in the same room as you. How would you know how I smelled? It's an improvement because we weren't in the same room together. That's how I know that you didn't smell bad. <laughs> That's going to do it for us tonight. Here on the Primetime Show, have a great rest of your evening. Bert's going to be at Hattie B's tomorrow, too. He'll smell like hot chicken and sweat because God knows he'll be doing both. Uh, him and Lucas, I haven't told them yet, but I'm going to have them participate in a hot chicken challenge for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society after the radio show concludes. So uh, hang out with us from, well, I guess we're going to be there from 6 to one p 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Hattie B's at the Factory in Franklin because they're also debuting their new breakfast menu. So if you want to see Ramon, Kayla, and Will, and even Bert, you can go to the factory in Franklin tomorrow and enjoy uh, yourself. They open at 7, so maybe don't show up at 6 a.m. for their hot chicken biscuit, along with many other breakfast menu items that I know people are very, very excited about. Eric Alonzo says, Bert will smell like hot chicken and cigarettes. God, you know, truer words have never been spoken on this program, which is as good a place to end it as any that we have. See you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. on 104.5 The Zone. Go home! Go home! Go home! You're embarrassing Nashville! Go home!